Good afternoon, everyone. This is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews, and I am your literary ambassador. And today I have Hakeem Stokes on my channel. Welcome, Hakeem. Peace and blessings. How are you, everyone? Um, definitely glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. And everyone that's dealing with COVID-19 and the effects of COVID-19, I definitely wish you all um, the best. And just please keep striving and hang in there. Keep the faith. All right. Um, tell us a little about yourself, Hakeem. Well, I'm Hakeem Stokes. I'm an artist. I'm a poet. I'm an author from South Philadelphia, born and raised. <laughs> uh, fell in love with uh, literary arts early on, I would say possibly in the uh, in grade school, of course. Uh, it was uh, therapy. Mm -hmm. It was very therapeutic. It was a, a form of escapism for uh, just everyday life. Because a lot of people don't recognize or realize that uh, children are affected uh, by uh, trauma as well or they have uh, difficulties and worries as well. So it's not just adults that may need counseling or <laughs> escapism, you know, children may as well. And it's not that I was going through anything uh, extremely traumatic, any more traumatic than anyone else's childhood, but I, I did need a little bit of escapism. Uh, so, that's what writing provided for me as a, a way to uh, get away. And that's what made me fall in love with it because it was like, whatever may have been going on in your life, you can restructure it through writing. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you write is the uh, university, the universe that you create. So I thought that was very powerful. Yeah. And um, so that, that's what introduced me to the arts so I went from the literary aspect to the artistic aspect, and I began doing um, paintings and uh, drawings, and things of that nature. So everything progressed. So by uh, high school, I began doing the uh, forms of uh, rap, if you will. Mm -hmm. So that progressed into uh, poetry, and that stuck. Uh, poetry was definitely, again, powerful uh, using your words. I don't think a lot of people uh, utilize the spoken word as much as they should. And that was definitely an outward release, mm -hmm. you know, as, as art is. And um, so I continued that all the way through college. So then I combined the two, uh, literary and the uh, artistry and uh, by, by the end of uh, probably my 20s I uh, cultivated a book and that's when I did my first novel mm -hmm. and my first the first novel that I penned was I Need You Too. So that was my first that was my initial baby you know I did I Need You Too and it just took off from there but uh yeah that, that's pretty much um, so far to date, that, that's me, you know, the artist, the, uh, the poet, the author, and there'll probably be something else tagged on to this hat <laughs> in a minute. But, you know, I, I, I take on all, all forms of, of, of art, you know, maybe I'll, I'll do modern dance or something next. Maybe I'll get into that <laughs> expressive art, art form or what have you. But, you know, I try to leave myself open to uh, art, because art is life. So, you know, we should explore it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. in, in a positive, in a positive, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is your genre? Um, I like to leave it open because uh, I was, as, as a human, I'm very eclectic, mm -hmm. so, that's what I express in my writing. 
that's how my writing comes through. Uh, I don't just peg myself into one genre. So I do fiction, or so far I've done fiction, mm -hmm. I've done nonfiction, and I've done poetry. So whatever I feel like writing or whatever I feel inside of me, I, I want to express it and I want to, you know, uh, disperse it to the universe. So right now, I'm not a specific, I'm not pegged into a specific genre. I'm just, a, I'm, I'm an author, I'm a writer. Okay. Can you tell us about your publishing uh, journey? Yes, well, uh, initially, I, uh, I did what everybody else does, or what a lot of people do, not everyone, but I did what a lot of folks do. I initially went through a few publishing houses and I, I got, uh, I was uh, presented a few contracts and they all were pretty standard. And I didn't believe that they were conducive to me. I didn't believe that they really gave me any power. Mm -hmm. I believed it was like relinquishing your power to the publisher, the publishing house. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they can do a lot of things for you, awesome, awesome things for you, you know, uh, definitely widely distribute your work, widely publicize your work. But with the advance of uh, social media, that's possible to do on your own. So with that thought in mind, I said, well, nobody's going to do me like me. Mm -hmm. So let me do it my, myself. So that's why I'm a self-published uh, author poet and I created this if you can see it asafalebooks.com yes yeah that, that's my uh, publishing company Asafale Books so I thought that was um I just pushed all my pushed all my chips to the middle of the table and just bet on myself and I've been doing that ever since okay now let's talk about your books you can talk about each one of them, tell us each, about each one of them, and then you can read snippets from some. <laughs> okay, well, uh, the first one is, as I said, I need you too. And that's the story of a young man who realizes the virtues of monogamy. And it's pretty much um, a lot of folks uh, story in the beginning because you know you don't know what you want mm -hmm. you don't know what you uh, a lot of times you don't even know what you need out of a relationship or from another person mm -hmm. so that's what I need you to cover it was you know following this young man who was you know and I tell people don't judge a book by his cover because you see he's on the cover with you know mm -hmm. two women mm -hmm. but it's just basically you know you get something from one sister or person, whoever you're dealing with, you get mm -hmm. something from one person, you get something from another person and you wish you could mesh them together for that one, that one um, person, that one quote unquote perfect person. And a lot of folks, it's funny because a lot of folks will look for perfection in another person and they're, and they're not perfect themselves. So uh, that's, that's his adventure. You know, he's trying to find that woman. And, and a lot of times, you know, you find that person, but you're not ready for him. You know, unfortunately, uh, he finds himself in a lot of predicaments. But, you know, it's definitely a great read. Um, it's, I would say it's for the, it's for the 20 something. Uh, it's definitely for the 20 something. But unfortunately, it's a lot of folks that are 40, 50, 60 something still going through the same situation. Yep. I don't know. So, uh, my next writing for my next project was book poetry, um, reality, life, conscious struggle. And this actually, um, goes through four, four, uh, stages of our existence. It actually explores four stages of our existence, reality, life, conscious, and the struggle of them all. And, um, that Book, that, that book of poetry is very interesting. Being though it was my first book of poetry, penned book of poetry, because mm -hmm. um, as I said, I, I did travel the poetry circuit early on, and um, 
I had never any, I had never had a collective. So mm -hmm. uh, speaking to several folks, they was like, wow, I like to see all your poetry in one place, you know, and then that just made me say, okay, well, let me do a book of poetry. And so that challenged me to put everything in, in a standard form, which was wonderful because I had never seen everything in one place. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that that's another great thing about writing, just actually seeing your words on paper, seeing your your uh, your, your dreams realized. I think everybody should see that, you know, see their positive dreams in play. So my next project was At 12 After. Mm. And this novel tells, this is my second novel, and it tells the story of three men that grew up as best friends. Unfortunately, at the age of 12, their life, uh, they all experienced separate tumultuous experiences and it sent their life into peril and it tells of how their friendship fares in light of it. So uh, it's, it's, it's a story, it's a book of how three men, although everything they went through, they try to keep this friendship together. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of challenges involved. And, you know, that that's a great thing, I believe, because uh, you, you I believe you don't need friends, but it's a great thing to have friends. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, unfortunately, folks have a uh, family. You know, their friends become their family or their friends may, maybe play a bigger part than their family. Mm -hmm. So... It's always good to have someone to uh, speak with, bounce ideas off of, and, and um, have some kind of camaraderie with, you know. But if you don't have it, if you don't have that, that person, there's always the creator. <laughs> so yeah. never, never discount the creator. Yeah. So my next project was Elixir. And that's... Uh, that's a book of poetry. That's my second book of poetry. And that's uh, grown folk poetry, I like to say. <laughs> that's something for the for the candlelight and the, the wine and, the, you know, just uh, putting on a nice little Teddy Pendergrass in the background or something like that while you, you're getting your read on. So <laughs> that's grown folks poetry. And uh, my next uh, nonfiction, my first nonfiction, project was uh, Purple Orchard Syndrome. And Purple Orchard Syndrome was important to me because it was indicative of my, uh, my, my, my background or what made me. Um, I interviewed 12 men between the ages of 21 and 71 on their experience of growing up without a father in the household. So it, it tells of those individuals uh, their trials their tribulations, and their triumphs. And uh, that's, like I said, that's how I grew up. That was my background. Um, there was my mother, who was a wonderful, powerful woman that did all she could and put her all into raising me and making me the man that I am today. So I definitely thank her immensely for that because mm -hmm. it's not an easy job. Uh, raising a child and then being a mother trying to raise a son. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm, not that it's any easier a woman raising a daughter, but at least you have relative factors with a, with a daughter because mm -hmm. she's, you know, female. But with a male, I, I believe there is some differential that uh, needs to be met or needs to be addressed. So, hats off to all the single mothers that's raising sons or raising children by themselves, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my next project was another book of poetry. This concepts of intimacy. And this traces a relationship from courtship to nuptials. Oh. And it's basically, uh, I, I wrote that uh, book, of, I wrote that poetry inspired by a lot of folks that I spoke with, young and old, that didn't know or wasn't aware of uh, uh, being courted, if you will, 
a lot of women had never been courted, even though they may have had a husband or a, a child or children with a guy or just had a long-term relationship or live-in situation. They had never been courted by that person. You know, they, 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 the way they spoke, they didn't say it, but in layman's terms, it was kind of like a might as well situation. You know, we might as well get together, we might as well be together, we might as well stay together, mm-hmm. or we might as well break up. So they had never been court, courted. And unfortunately, a lot of gentlemen I spoke to, they had never courted uh, a woman. Mm-hmm. And they didn't even know the concept. They had never even been introduced to that. It was just like, she's all right. I'm going to just get with her because, you know, or... You know, she stuck with me through all this craziness, so I'm just going to get with her because of that. You know, there's always all these other factors besides Mm -hmm. I love her. I want to make a life with her. I want to stay with her forever. However long long forever will be. Mm -hmm. So the next book of poetry that I penned was uh, Melodies Inside Lullaby. And that was when I began, as you can see the cover, that's when I delved back into my uh, my art perspective. So I started doing art again and it was simultaneous. So when I started doing art again, I started writing poetry indicative of the art. So. And, and the art that I like to do, or well, love to do, is abstract and collages. So I tried to write poetry that formulated that. So all the poetry in this book is abstract poetry. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so it's it's not your traditional poetry. Mm-hmm. It's definitely an abstract form. And this is the latest to date. This is Littered Fields. And this is kind of a retort to the Purple Orchard Syndrome, whereas though uh, in this book, uh, um, Book of Nonfiction, I talked to several women about their relationship growing up with their father, whether he was in the household or not, just what was their uh, relationship Mm -hmm. with their father in relation to the men that they chose to be with in their lives. So a lot of times, um, it's not a perfect science, but a lot of times the way your relationship was with your father or whatever uh, type of man your father was, most times uh, that's the kind of brother or person that you get with, you know, um, fortunately or unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Because in that book, there's several women that are, it's a, it's a couple of women that are married, and it's a couple of women that are not married, it's a couple of women that are single, uh, it's women that are in um, uh, other situations. And, you know, so I try to get a perspective. And in both nonfiction books, I talk to several people, like Purple Orchard Syndrome. Uh, I spoke to men between the ages of 21 to 71 mm-hmm. and of different ethnicities. And that's the same thing with littered fields. Uh, I spoke to that age age bracket and different ethnicities because I think you, you definitely need, because it's life, and you definitely need uh, different perspectives, not just the black perspective mm-hmm. or the brown perspective or the person of color perspective. It's important to realize that uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we're all going through the same situation. Mm-hmm. And I think it would help you to cope with it a little bit better. You know, you don't seem isolated. And so from there, I signed an author, Lola G, and that's her book. That's her debut, excuse me, debut novel. Uh, Pretty Duplicity. And that's a fiction novel that tells the story of a young woman who's trying to navigate her way through uh, the wilderness of life. So it's a very very telling story of uh, a lot of things that 
you know, some women, some young women go through in life. And it was very uh, gripping. It was very telling. And it's not her story, but it's a story. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, several women's stories. You know, yeah. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, but it's it, it was a very delicate subject matter. So I treated it as if it was my project. You know, I invested a lot of time, as did she. She very much poured her heart and soul out in the book, and there uh, will be other exciting projects coming from her in the uh, in the future. So pretty duplicity. Please look out for it as well as all my other projects. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for Lola G and everything that she has um, from this point on. Mm -hmm. So that that's, that brings you pretty much up to speed with me. <laughs> okay, what which which one would you like to read out of? Um, actually, none of them, but. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll pick a book of poetry. Okay. Might be uh, pretty much good for right now. And um, I don't know. I didn't have anything prepared, so. All right, so I'll just read this one. Um, it's the first one that I actually opened up to, so. I'll go to, uh, this one is from Melodies Inside Lullaby. This is the latest book of poetry. Mm -hmm. The title of this poetry is Omitted, or the title of this poem is Omitted. I'm sorry. I am the working class. I am the social illiterate. See, I be the visual invisible. The individual, that's an intimate object. A jewel hidden in plain sight. The path less desired. Never the peace, the resistance. The forgotten fruit left next to the tree. I am the gum stuck under the table. One that aged out of social, the one that aged out of social services, the last sip of water left inside the container, a single crumb dancing around in a thought in a thought to be empty box, the end piece of bread everyone throws away, that thought that escapes you. I'm what you really need, but can't remember where to find me. I dwell in the back halls of the abandoned building on that dead end street. Omitted. Wow. So, like I said, this was, uh, I did abstract poetry relating to the abstract art that I was doing. So it was even different for me because uh, in my previous books, I did the, uh, as some folks say, the rhyming poetry. <laughs> Whereas everything, at the end of every line, everything rhymed. So I just wanted to do something, try to do something a little bit different. So this one from Melodies Inside Lullabies, this poem is entitled, course. Maybe it's not me that she wants. Perhaps I simply happen upon all of her haunts. Possibly I possess the set of eyes that see far beyond her cries. I could be that these masculine hands, or could it be that these masculine hands massage away her despise? She could just need two lovable lips like these to kiss, or sometimes it feels real good to nestle her 
head atop a chest like this. Perchance, my shoulders provide a comfortable space for her head to reside. They have my feet quickly run to her whenever there's an appetite that needs to be fed. At any rate, I get it. Although she needs me, she'll never accept it. I'm not the one she wants as a supplier of her needs. Regrettably, I'm the one that's deficient indeed. Wow, I like that. Yeah. So that's just, you know, you're trying to pour your heart out mm -hmm. to this person or you're trying to chase this person and they're not even paying attention to you. They want someone else. They're, they're looking past you. <laughs> they're looking through you to a situation that they don't even need. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, let me see. Let me see another one. Let me get to another one. With the poetry. Okay, so this is from my one of my rhymy <laughs> poetry. So this is from Concepts of Intimacy. Okay, and this poem is entitled Symptomatic. Okay. It goes, Love fell, as did I fall. Injured not, but risking it all. Stomach is knotted. Tongue weighs a ton. Nostrils are gaping, as proof you're the one. Knees all a buckle. Eyes are aglow. Hands steady shaking, but when you can't say no, you know. The heart is a flutter. Wilts my head light as a feather. Minds completely uncluttered because we are together. So I stated this was the book of a, you know, a relationship that uh, traces, well, traces a relationship from courtship to nuptial. Mm -hmm. So that, that's part of it. And yeah, knowing that someone is actually your one and uh, <laughs> chasing it, you know, stay, stay in, you know, steadfast to the course. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to last love. Okay, the, the title of this poem is Last Love. I love you, my darling, but you no longer love me. You can't hear me because you're not listening. You can't feel me because we're no longer touching. You can't see me because you're no longer looking. You can't taste me because we're no longer kissing. You can't expect me to continue chasing. I love you, my darling, except I feel our love is expiring. So that's another aspect of, that's another aspect of love. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you fall in and out of love and you have to uh, be patient and vigilant to repair your love. Mm -hmm. everything in a, in a relationship isn't going to be hunky-dory you definitely going to have challenges and that's just life so. so let me see let me go to another book of poetry I don't even know this is a lick for I don't even know if I could read anything on air <laughs> <laughs> See, there's got to be one. Uh... <laughs> All right, this seems pretty tame. So, 
out of Elixir. <laughs> this is plain to see. Plain to see. Okay, so this reads what we have is what we have between us goes far deeper than lust. It dangles just above what they label as love. Newness, freshness, the truest essence. Our hearts and minds found in infinite pleasure never realized. That's you and me. That's one of the more tamer works. <laughs> in this book. <laughs> and this thing is Okay, so maybe this one too, I'll say. So this is still out of ear lips and mm -hmm. Again, these are the more tamer works contained in the elixir. This is influence. How come I've been undressing you with my eyes and my mind all this time and you're still fully clothed? Reality disappoints me. Why can't my fantasy be? Judging by your feverish look, our thoughts are shared. I dare you. Mm. So, yeah, you gotta, gotta kind of respect the audience. And I don't want to get anything into anything too risque. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up the elixir for the uh, for the untamed <laughs> versions of uh, poetry. Contained in that book. So, uh, this is a poem out of uh, Reality Life Conscious. Mm -hmm. This is my baby. This is my first one that I pinned. So, this is. Uh, did you do the um, Did you do the artwork on that one? I did the artwork on everything. Like the uh, the models were handpicked. The photos were taken by me of the uh, on the novels. Mm -hmm. uh, I handpicked the uh, I handpicked them. Uh, actually gave them you know the dress and the direction. I did I do everything under a soft lay book. Uh, I do everything needed except for print the books. So <laughs> I do everything but print the books. But all the art is done by me. All the pictures are done by. Um, and I, I do take uh, corrective criticism, so I'm not uh, bullheaded, you know, and that's the important, that's the important measure of being a, a, a manager, or entrepreneur, a CEO, or whatever. You have to be open to corrective criticism because that's how you get better. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely don't know it all. You know, you know, you may know a lot, but you don't know it all. So if someone has a positive uh, correction, you definitely want to take heat. So, um, and I listen to my elders. I definitely listen to my elders if they have uh, anything to uh, contribute to my work positively. I definitely listen to the elders. I mean, they've been here before. They've done it. Mm -hmm. They've probably done it two, three times. So definitely to give a uh, ear, let them give you an earful. Mm -hmm. uh, Reality Life Conscious Struggle. This uh, poem is entitled One Night. A chance meeting, heart rapidly beating, a glance repeating as sights fleeting, jealous for only my mind's eye has the pleasure to visualize, to visualize events from the night before, right before we, de we departed each other's company. Life's precious thread unwound. Now every stitch in time is more profound. When I have a relapse or powers of sight unseen, a wonderful daydream. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let me see. Oh, impossible boss. Right? And see, this gets into, uh, there's a lot of, uh, 
powerful poetry in this. This is one of the lighter uh, sections. Well, this is one of the lighter poems in this section entitled uh, Struggle. Because they're all broken down as four, like I said, it's four aspects of life. So it's reality, life, conscious struggle. So this is contained in struggle. Nothing less is the title of this poem, Nothing Less. Emotions beaten in scorn, feelings tattered and torn, hopes shattered and worn, dreams defeated and unborn, never sacrifice oneself for someone else. So that's one of the lighter ones. Uh, the yeah, rest of them, they get into a, <laughs> they get into a whole another <laughs> uh, aspect of life. Um, I might be able to read another one. Let me see. Stop it. This one is entitled "Stop It." Another you struck down by senseless violence. Another vibrant voice silenced. The fire of a child's heart again extinguished. Hopes, dreams. Promises and wishes diminished, a riot crushed, a lion hushed. We're left to mourn eternally. An adolescent sand who's rushed. Unfortunately, it would be the last, but a last life was ended much too fast. So that's dedicated to the youth that uh, unfortunately lost their life um, on black on black crime, you know, the gang violence and uh, just just senseless violence. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's, it's been going on forever and it just it just needs to stop. That's why I just simply entitled it Stop It. You know, it's a. Uh, it's time for togetherness, and with this, uh, that that might be the only positive thing that comes out of this COVID nineteen is that everyone's togetherness may force everyone to look at life in a more positive, uh, excuse me, in a, in a more positive light, and just realize, you know, we need each other. You know, if you're, you know, there's some folks that are like, oh, I'm stuck in the, I'm stuck in the house with my family. I'm stuck in the house with my, my spouse and my children, but it's not stuck. You know, you're not stuck. This is, this is your offspring. This is your significant other. You know, you should cherish that. Even the ones that are alone, sometimes you need time alone to reflect on yourself and for its betterment, you know. Uh, a lot of times people don't have time to slow down. Our lives are so hectic, you know, um, including myself. I'm pointing at myself with all of this. So it's, uh, you know, sometimes you just need to be by yourself to reflect on life, reflect on, more importantly, your life and how you can make your life uh, more positive and more, much more better. And that's what a lot of times with uh, relationships, you know, folks don't do that. They just rush into another relationship to get over the past relationship. And a lot of times you need time alone. You know, you don't always need a, even in bad times, you don't always need a shoulder to cry on. Sometimes you just need to sit and reflect on your wrongs. You know, maybe you ran the person away or maybe, you know, you pushed the person away, you know, and you have to realize that and, and realize what's the root of that problem that's within yourself. And as I said, I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm pointing at me on, on everything I'm saying. So uh, it, it sounds simple and it's a corny phrase, but we live and we learn. Hopefully we do. We live and we learn. You know, you can't keep saying, it's the other person, it's their fault, it's her fault, it's his fault, it's not always their fault. If something, if it keeps happening, it, it's gotta be you. You gotta realize that it's you. And you gotta say, let me get more educated on me. 
<laughs> and how I can stop me from damaging me. And then, therefore, hopefully, I won't damage others. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I'm off the soapbox now. <laughs> uh, what are you working on right now? Well, right now, I'm actually working on, because I have several other authors uh, coming out, probably in the beginning of, because it is COVID-19 again. Uh, I hate to give it so much press, but... Um, probably because it is, they won't be uh, debuted until the beginning of 2021. So everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe they needed time to get everything together or whatever. You know. So uh, 2021 is slated. It'll be three different authors out under soft labels. So uh, hopefully Lola G will have another project out. And then I have two other authors that will have projects out there, uh, seasoned seniors, as I like to say, mm -hmm. and um, they have uh, excellent work. One is coming out with a, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, she has a work on her, her, unfortunately, her husband that passed of cancer, and he was a magnificent man. He had, he'd done a lot, he had done a lot of things in, in the Philadelphia area. Uh, and, and she wanted to do a book on him so that she can actually account for his work. So that'll be a wonderful piece that's coming out. And also I have another author, another senior, um, seasoned senior who will be doing work. Uh, it's a, it's a fiction book, but it's on a, a very uh, interesting subject of, uh, it's like a folk lore if you will she's talking about witches mm -hmm. and uh witch doctors from a book i mean from a uh, village in africa because the uh the young woman is a uh, nigerian mm -hmm. so she's speaking about uh folklore that goes on that may could probably did didn't go on in a village in in her community so that's going to be very magnificent work. I'm, I'm uh, excited about both works coming out. Mm -hmm. And where can readers find you and your books? I have stated before. <laughs> I hate to be so crude, but this is me. This is it. Thesoftlakebooks.com. Thesoftlakebooks.com. You can go here and you can get every book that you uh that's uh penned by myself and lola g's book is there as well and in 2021 hopefully in the uh, spring of 2021 those other submissions will be there as well but for right now all eight of my works are there and the single work of lola g is there and uh my art will be up there as well um i will be uh display and I will be doing an art show in 2021 probably uh, probably near the, the summer of 2021 because I actually was slated to do one in Virginia uh, do an art exhibit but unfortunately with all of this it got canceled so that was supposed to be in um, actually in May the beginning of this month so you know like I said things happen for a reason and uh you know, nobody's upset about it. Um, and actually, I'll give you a, uh, give everyone a sneak peek of maybe two pieces. Uh, one moment. Mm -hmm. So this is. Oh, that's pretty. That's one piece, and this is the other piece. I like that. I don't know what you see in my background, but I hope it doesn't offend anybody. I'm back. <laughs> oh, I didn't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually speaking to you from my office, so I have uh, all types of art and everything, so I don't know if something racy was in the background or not. So. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to add before we close? Um, just everyone, please, please, please uh, stay vigilant. Keep the faith. And don't take this, don't take this COVID thing lightly. Um, just, just mask up and mm -hmm. stay indoors as possible. I know, I know it's hard economically and and social distancing. You can't hug your mother, you can't hug your father, and stuff like that. Your children, but it, it, trouble don't last always. It's just a momentary thing. It's just momentarily. Just, you know, it's only been, I mean, if you look at it, it's only been, what, 60 days? I mean, it hasn't even been three months. Like, please, please, just everyone remain calm and keep the faith. And, you know, if you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, go on the website, get yourself a book. <laughs> just go on the website, get yourself a book. Calm your nerves. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to be all right. Ain't that what Bob Marley said? Every yep. little thing yep. is going to be all right. So just take that concept in mind. But thank you very much, the queen, the queen Clem, as they say, <laughs> Queenie Clem. Yes. Thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. And, uh, you know, bless you and your family. Hopefully everyone is doing thank well and taking heed to uh, what they need to take heed to. But uh, thank you very much. And please, everyone, go on to softlaybooks.com. I'm also on Amazon. If you want an ebook, you can go on Amazon.com, look up Hakeem Stokes, or look up any of the titles that I'm sure Ms. Queenie Clem will have displayed. And you can find, uh, you can find one of my, my renderings right there. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, all right. Thank you. Again, this is Queenie Clem with Queenie's Book Talk and Reviews. Happy reading. Bye, y'all. Peace.